Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Our organist is Andrew Unsworth, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. First up on the program is an old Lutheran chorale, arranged as an organ prelude by Johann Gottfried Walter, an almost exact contemporary of J.S. Bach and one of the great German organists of his day. Walter wrote more than 200 chorale preludes for organ. Today we hear Lobe den Herren, den mächtigen König der Ehren, known widely in the English-speaking world as Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. When hearing an unfamiliar piece of music for the first time, we try to listen for where the melody is, what the accompaniment sounds like, how the tone color or dynamics affect the listening experience, how the texture and form of the piece develop. When I first heard the opening prelude from Louis Vienne's Symphony No. 1 for organ, it intrigued me. I was listening for a melody, but I heard only accompaniment. There were motifs, certainly, at the beginning, but they seemed to me like little three-note ideas that hadn't yet coalesced into a real tune. Now, this wasn't entirely surprising. Both Bach and Chopin had written keyboard preludes that were accompaniment only, if you like, with no melody. Bach's famous prelude in C from the well-tempered clavier was so obviously free of melody that Charles Gounod added one more than a century later. But then, as Vienne's first movement proceeded and the tone color, texture, register, rhythms and dynamics changed, I began to hear more clearly that there was, in fact, a real theme. Those little three-note motifs weren't just motifs, they were part of a larger, grander statement that became clear to me only at the end, though it had been there all the time from the very beginning. This isn't just how I experienced this unfamiliar music, it's often how we learn important life lessons. Repetition and a new context can reveal things that were always there, but not always clearly comprehended. Inspired writers from the past have taught us that an understanding of sacred truth is accumulated precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. 
We learn it gradually, if we remain engaged, and the important lessons will become clearer and more defined as we stay with them to the end. That might not be exactly what Vienne was intending in this piece, but it's one thing I learned from it. Andrew will play now the prelude first movement from Louis Vienne's Symphony No. 1.
The English composer and organist Percy Whitlock studied with Rayford Williams at the Royal College of Music, but seems not to have adopted very much of his teacher's compositional style. That's fine. It's not good pedagogy anyway to teach composition students to sound only like their professor. But with the folk tune from his five short pieces published in 1930, Whitlock at least dabbles a bit in the folk song revival and English pastoralist tradition of Vaughan Williams, Holst, Finzi, Warlock and others. It's a haunting Anglo-Celtic style melody, beautifully suited to the colors of the organ. We'll hear that next, and then our organist Andrew Unsworth will play his own arrangement of the traditional hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, a core element of these organ programs from Temple Square.
the last two works on today's concert both have direct connections to the American Civil War, but from very different angles. The Irish folk song, Shula Roon, was adapted during the American Revolutionary War into a, an American folk song, Johnny Has Gone for a Soldier. But in the 1989 television documentary series, The Civil War, by Ken Burns, this folk song appeared several times in the soundtrack and created an association between that song and the Civil War that still lingers in the memory. It's a deeply tragic, melancholy song. We'll hear it performed in Andrew Unsworth's own arrangement. One of the legacies of the American Civil War was the tradition of military-style brass bands that endured long after the war was over. And it was in that tradition that John Philip Sousa was raised and flourished. Sousa's father, a Portuguese immigrant, was a trombonist in the United States Marine Band and enlisted his 13-year-old son as a member of the band in 1868, just three years after the Civil War had ended. Years later, John Philip Sousa became that same band's leader. It was while serving as conductor of the United States Marine Band that Sousa wrote one of his most popular marches, Semper Fidelis. And after we've heard Johnny Has Gone for a Soldier, that rousing, heartfelt march will close today's program.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up, featuring tabernacle organist Andrew Unsworth. We're so glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.